gentlemen today we're going to talk about blueprint actors so we know that we can get into our level blueprints if we want to do something that occurs on a specific level but you can also create an object that has a blueprint within it as well so we're going to do that by right clicking anywhere on a blank area choose blueprint class and we're going to select an actor and we're going to call this actor bp uh let's call this uh let's say disco light no spaces capitalize the first letter of each word i'm going to pull this out here and you can see that when i hit g game mode you can see that it's not really there there's nothing i mean it's just a placeholder now i can get into the blueprints for this by either clicking on this or just double clicking on the original object and this is the blueprint so the blueprint consists of a viewport construction script for functions and an event graph and we're going to start with the uh, viewport and we're going to put something in here so i'll just look up my static meshes and i'll look up lamps and i'll use this uh, ceiling lamp right here and i'll just pull that up so that it's right in the center of that x Next thing I'm going to do is add a, um, a light. Let's add a spotlight and we'll angle it. Oops, I just called it U. There we go. We're going to angle that spotlight if I click on it here. Uh, zero degrees on the rotation. We want to change it to, sorry, uh, there. The Y axis, we want to set it to negative 90. So it goes straight down. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. So I compile that and you can see that now it has a little light that shines down. What's cool about Blueprint Actors is if I made a duplicate of it, all these actors have both of those components in it. And if I make a change, for example, if I were to take this ceiling lamp component and move it, don't do this, but just watch. You can see that it does that to all of them at the same time. So we're gonna, in order to create some coding in this, because you can code these objects, we're gonna add another component and that is a box trigger or box collision, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna put this box collision. Uh, click on the box collision. I called it TR, I don't know why. Uh, there. And hit R, hmm, it's not letting me scale. Sometimes it does that, and I'm not sure why. Move it first, I guess. And that seems to resolve that issue. And then just pull it down and make it kind of big. So uh, when I compile and we hit G here, we can see that it kind of fills in this whole area. I'm actually going to go a little bit wider. Okay. You can see there's a lot of those there. So if you go anywhere in this area, the party is going to start. Uh, so let's go into the code. We go into the event graph. Ignore the construction script for now. And I'm going to start off by right clicking on the box and say add an event when the actor begins overlap. And we are going to, uh, when that happens, we're going to set the color of this light. To just click on this black square and we'll set it pull this all the way up pull this all the way up and we'll set it to uh, red I guess compile so now when I hit play and I go into that area nothing happens because I forgot to tie my event to my function let's hit play now oh and I also need to compile it oh, maybe, I, maybe I did I don't know why it's not working let's see There it goes. We got red lights. 
So our lights just turned red. And uh, that's kind of cool. But let's instead, let's pick a random color. So if you right click on the light color, oops, I want to keep that there. If you right click on the uh, light color, split the pin structure, you'll see that it's made up of a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha. So let's uh, make this random. And what we'll do here, this is a float. So we'll do a random float. And we'll stick that there. Then we'll pick another one. And we'll stick that there. And we'll pick another one. We'll stick that there. And it should pick three random colors for the red, green, and blue. Let's see what happens. Oh, we're there. Okay, so we have green, we have blue. Every time I go in, it kind of picks a different random color. Okay, that's what we want. Um, in order to see this a little bit better, let's just both pull the light intensity up. I'm just going to add a zero to my intensity so that we can really see what's going on. I'll watch that one more time. You can see that. It picks a different color depending on where I enter. But then they stay, they stay like that, right? Let's have them just strobe to those different colors every time. So what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, just, when this is finished, we're going to set a delay of... 0.2 seconds and we're going to come right back to where we started and you can see it creates an infinite loop so once this sequence starts it never stops so we have a little disco going on and you can see in our code that's going on forever But let's say with that we don't want the party to go on forever. We want it to stop when we leave. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to put another event on here on the box. Right click. When we end overlap, we're going to stop all this from happening. In order to do that, we are going to need to create a branch here. And if this branch is, this condition is true, it's going to continue on to the function. If not, it's going to stop. So what is this, what is the end overlap going to do? Well, let's create a function that will turn this to, to false. Sorry, not a function, a variable. So we're going to click on variables, add variable, and it's going to be a Boolean. And it's just going to say near light. And we'll compile that. And by default, you are not near the light. So we're going to drag it out here. And we're going to set it to false when you leave. And we're going to set it to true when you enter. So let's check that box right there. So now this variable is going to change between false to true depending on whether or not you're in the box. And you can see we can watch this variable um, let me hit play forget how to do that actually let's see here no don't worry about it we'll just watch watch what happens so we come in here the loop starts so it's still doing it is still changing that from true to false, but we don't see anything happen because that's not enough to get this to uh, not occur. So what we're going to do, let me just move all this, is instead of going from completed back to set light color, we'll go from completed to this branch right here. So when it's done, it's going to check this branch, and if it's false, it's going to stop doing anything. So as you can see, it checks, it sets the light to checked goes to the branch, sets the light color. Now we just need to pull this out one more time and instead of setting it, we're gonna get it just to check the value. 
and that is either going to be true or false. Nothing happens. So let's watch. So it starts and then it stops. Starts and it stops. When it stops, let's have the light turn off. We'll just do that kind of a cheat way by just taking this. And we need to uh, make sure we either draw these two together or copy and paste that, but that, that'll work. And we are going to um, set our new color to zero. So that should do it. When this is false, we're going to drag this to this event. So let me break that. There we go. Let's check. Oh, and to break it, I just, I right clicked here. Break. So the party starts, and then we leave, and the lights turn off. They become black, and black light doesn't emit any color, so there it goes. We have ourselves a fun little party, and I can, again, take all these disco lights, and can make... right now they're over, I think they're over my player stars, so some of them don't quite work right away, but... I could create a few copies here, and we can have ourselves a good time here in Disco World, and then we leave, and the party's over. All right, so that is a blueprint actor using a Boolean variable and a branch. Report two three one. 